it's not just the drug distributors that we're hearing are in these talks and close to a potential settlement here. It's also Johnson & Johnson, right. which could contribute about $4 billion, and that is also less than Wall Street had potentially estimated for J&J. &J. Teva also is in talks to potentially contribute at least $15 billion worth of drugs to the settlement. We don't yet know about any cash. Wait, that Teva's Teva. contributing drugs to a settlement? Drugs, potentially ones that could be used to reverse opioid overdose. Oh, like nalox, no, naloxone. Naloxone, yeah. exactly. Okay. Um, and That's potentially genius. other drugs and services. A drug settlement By selling drugs. more of your this, effective this drugs. This is the way, right. what makes America great. Well, actually, it's interesting you bring up that point because as part of the Purdue settlement, which isn't part of this, right. that company essentially would be turned into a public trust and the sales of its current drugs, including right. opioids, yeah. yeah, would then the proceeds of that fund would go settlement. to exactly to the so a lot of people have a problem with that. When so, fund your problem <laughs> with a new drug. But it, yeah. when, right. when the headlines like this are released and the stocks move the way that they do, does it jeopardize the? So if everybody if they say oh the stocks are up, it was less than expected. Does that mean well then they're going <laughs> right. to? Right, it's not a more. done deal yet, so that could absolutely happen. There are sticking points. Um, we're hearing over potentially even just attorneys' fees right now. Um, people are trying to sort that out. We should note they are up against a hard deadline. Jury selection is going on right now for the first federal trial scheduled to start in the opioid crisis. We're going to hear opening arguments on Monday unless these companies are successful here. And right now we've seen that they've filed to try to suspend the start of that trial. Um, we don't know whether that's going to be granted, but the judge has reportedly, according to the Washington Post, already shot down a request from the state AGs who asked for more time to negotiate this settlement. Okay. So everybody's trying to delay the start of the trial except the judge. Yeah, well. well. Really quick, Meg's obviously the expert, but $18 billion, it seems, and maybe you know better, a, a very small amount. And I looked it up. I mean, I didn't know that For much about it. For the whole opioid, yeah. But according to the CDC, two-thirds of all overdose deaths in the country are directly related to opioids. When I mean, you look at the magnitude of that, $18 billion doesn't seem like that much. Even if you pair that with what would Purdue be, potentially, about... 10 to $12 billion. Right, They've so maybe 30 versus what was the tobacco MSA. I mean, it's 250 interesting. Billion. Wow, $250 billion. So is this off by an order of magnitude? Right, and maybe it's all that they could get. I mean, you have to wonder... Why did they stop there? Who knows? I mean, yeah. maybe they couldn't get more. People have estimated it will take a lot more to fix this problem in the U.S. Right. No, it's a great point. I've uh, got to talk some Netflix, though. The results are out after the bell today. It's our last look at their numbers before Disney and Apple launched their streaming services. Remember, Netflix missed last quarter. The stock has been under pressure. Uh, Julia, Jim has threatened to drop it out of Fang uh, because of its performance. What are we looking for tonight? <laughs> Well, here's the thing, Kelly, you're right that Netflix subscriber numbers are always in focus. And now the pressure is really on after last quarter. Not only did international growth fall far short of estimates, but also you had domestic numbers decline. Now, there, these are the two numbers to watch this quarter. Number one is 7 million. That's how many subscribers are expected to be added this quarter, according to the company's guidance. The second number to watch is 9.5 million. That's the fourth quarter subscriber growth that analysts expect Netflix to guide to. And of course, now guidance is more important than ever because we'll see the new competition in the fourth quarter from Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus. They both launch next month. Kelly? Yeah, I, 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 know the, the, I mean, we talked with an analyst the other day, Robert, who said that Disney shares are implying a $60 billion valuation for its streaming services, Just including for Disney Plus, wow. before Disney Plus even launches. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And, and Julie was citing a study earlier that shows that this space is already getting crowded before we have these new entrants. I mean, the public appetite for, A, the costs are getting up there. I mean, it's like 20-something odd percent of people are already paying more than 100 bucks a month. More than 100? For, for streaming services. That's before what? we have Disney, we have Hulu, we have NBC doing Peacock. So I just think it's, it's going to get tougher as we get further out yeah. toward the beginning of next year. I wonder, does that tell you, was cost ever the real issue with, with cord cutters, or is it just that this is a better mousetrap? You know, do people just enjoy the streaming? I mean, I have my own problems when the Wi-Fi won't work, but anyway, it, they just enjoy <laughs> the stream when you don't experience have more. Right, exactly. I have to say, from my perspective as a Netflix user and lover, I am going to sign up for Apple TV Plus when it drops on November 1st because I want to watch that morning show morning TV show, um, and it's going to be another $5 a month, right, on top of my Netflix. I also subscribe to Hulu Plus. I'm a huge streaming fan. I don't want it all. <laughs> we they, see. They yeah. love, they I want more Meg to Terrells. Uh, Julia, so when they came out last quarter with the surprise miss, were they able to finger any reason why? Was it the, for example, is it the price increases? And you mentioned that there are other proposals about how they could do this, maybe ad supported in the future. It does that could fence Netflix in going forward. 
Well, so Netflix has been clear for the for years now, saying they do not want to do ad supported. They want to focus on the <clears throat> subscription business. So they've tried to exclude that from being on the table. But what they said is they just didn't have enough big show launches in the second quarter, and that's why they, their numbers fell short. And going forward, they feel bullish that they will see more subscriber additions because of high-profile shows and also movies, yeah. which they really use to promote the service. Worth noting that Netflix is doing 10 theatrical movie releases uh, this fall, so wow. really pushing to get Oscars and also marketing the fact that they have premium content on their service. Yeah, Julia, appreciate it. But it, and to the point, Meg, that you made, it, it is this is fundamentally still a show and a hit-driven product right. which yeah. works for them now especially while they're the kind of the, the only game in town but it, ma it makes it harder i think it's more of a theater you know a studio theater model going forward mm -hmm. one thing they're all competing for stars i mean if you look at netflix they have an eddie murphy film coming out like he's yeah. coming back so things like that are really driving it but on the other side amazon prime has had some really great shows that i really like the boys mm -hmm. marvelous mrs Maisel. oh so good yeah so good so, <laughs> i subscribe to that too <laughs> <laughs> well i think everybody does if you have prime so. that's right that's that's true uh, all right julia as i said thank you very much julia borston there netflix out after the bell and now to michigan where a judge is temporarily halting the state's ban on flavored vapes, which went into effect two weeks ago, ruling that the harm done to businesses that would have to shut down as a result outweighs the aim of stopping youth vaping. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Also, I believe there was a health angle to this where he said the need for people to transition off of smoking uh, traditional cigarettes also had to be taken into account. Well, a lot to consider here. Number one, this is actually a public health concern and also a huge small business success story. A lot of these vape shops are small businesses. The industry's grown from about $2.5 billion five years ago to an estimated $9 billion this year, and a lot of that going into small businesses. About 90% or so of a vape shop's business is flavored, flavored uh, vaping products. And for Juul, 80% of their sales are flavored products. So if you take away flavors, it has a big impact on everybody's top and bottom line, and you can kind of understand where the judge is coming from from a business aspect. But, Meg, as we all know, vaping is a big health epidemic. It is, and there's kind of two separate issues that are going on at the same time. There's the youth vaping epidemic, which people do blame on flavored e-cigarettes. And then, of course, there is the scary set of lung injuries that we're seeing happening right now. And that mostly has been tied to vaping THC and most often illegal THC products. Mm. So these vaping bans of flavored e-cigarette products won't necessarily stop the problems that we're seeing with the vaping uh, lung injuries. Uh, but if people are worried about the youth vaping epidemic, and absolutely everyone is, right. that's what those are directed to. There toward. was a little hypocrisy on both sides. So the judge saying, you know, I don't see a real health hazard here. And what about the smokers who are trying to stop? And on the other side, you know, the, she said the idea that we suddenly had a health emergency when this had been going on for a long time. That, that's a good point. I mean, why, why can the, the government suddenly, the governor suddenly say, by October 2nd, you've got to get all these products off the shelf? So maybe saying the nature in which they are going about this instead of giving people a, more of a head. But Correct. does that and really the, matter? And then the business is saying, well, vapes. we're not concerned about our business. We're really concerned about all the smokers that we're trying to stop out there and now can't because vaping right. product. I mean, that just, also both those arguments just struck me as ridiculous. Yeah, no, fair enough. But I'm not sure even if they phased this in or did something like that, it's still going to fundamentally undercut their business rank if 80 or 90% of it is flavored vapes. I mean, if 90% of your business is flavored vapes and you take that away, I yeah. mean, <laughs> the math is very simple to do. They don't make a lot of money on hardware or on tobacco flavor. The, the rationale I heard was that people are trying to quit cigarettes. They don't want to vape something that tastes like a cigarette. Right. I've, I've so. heard this anecdotally. I've heard the same thing. It's, who would have thought? Uh, anyway, uh, before we go, how about some smart speaker etiquette? Google's head of hardware told BBC News that he would let his guests know that he has a smart speaker before they enter his home. I uh, went on to say it's probably something that the products themselves should indicate. I don't know if they would announce themselves when <laughs> the door like, Just opens. so you know, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. You have a flag outside of your house. And everything that you say is going to be recorded on yeah. some nebulous yeah. thing, and it's going to go somewhere where you don't know where it's going. I don't trust smart speakers. I don't like them. If, you're, if I'm in your house, please turn them off. It's like you go to someone's house, you're going to say, please accept the following conditions signed here before you walk in the door. No, it's like, so, uh, but I'm with, I'm with Holland on this. I don't like them either, but it never occurred to me, I guess, because they're not quite ubiquitous yet, that I, when I walk into someone else's house, if I don't like them, should I tell them to unplug it or turn it off or something? Yes, yeah. I think so. I mean, we all know that our phones and our TVs are watching us, but you have to keep in mind, this smart speaker is designed to hear what you say from the furthest corner of your room. Like, but I have if you whisper, with the it's designed to hear but you. I don't know how to say that in a way that doesn't sound like totally insane. And <laughs> it sounds totally insane. The other thing that really freaks me out about this <laughs> is that the, the Google guy is implying that 
Right. These things there's are something to be worried about. Yeah, yeah. there's a yeah. reason. The people you should inside not... the companies are telling us exactly. we should be worried. Which is why it's getting so many headlines. They're yeah. like, geez, if this guy <laughs> thinks this should be. All right.